Hi there, everybody. Welcome. Uh, this is Drawing Together. I'm Scott with Artist Network, and today we are working on this. This is a photo I took of uh, from a, a tour through Mesa Verde National Park last summer. Um, and it, I've been kind of sitting with this for a while. I, I haven't really done much with this image or anything from this trip, so I was really excited to be working on this one. So this is charcoal that we're working on today. Um, this is a relatively small sheet of paper, and I'll show you exactly what we're working with. So this is rag paper, and it's, this is Hanamula sketch paper, um, and it's 8.3 by 11.7 inches. So it's about 8.5 by 11, a little bit longer. Um, so but I think if you have you know, the, the size of the reference photo is designed for something like about an eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 14. So um, I did a little bit of cropping in this one. So um, if you just have a, a standard sheet of paper, you're going to do just fine. Um, uh, there are some questions that I want to get to. And so if you're joining us for the first time, um, you'll find the reference image uh, in the description below. So you can bring that up, you can follow along, or you can kind of watch this again later. This does go up as a recording. Um, and as you can see in the chat, people are, are asking questions. And so it's helpful if, every, if you want to post your questions in all caps, I'm more likely to see them and be able to call them out because we do get a fair amount of uh, discussion coming through very quickly. So it's tough, tough to monitor all of that. Uh, but Nia, you had some questions about materials. Uh, so today I'm working with um, vine charcoal, and that's what I have here, um, as well as I have these compressed general charcoal pencils. So I have an HB and this is a 2B. Um, and you can see that what I've done here is I've kind of shaved away the casing to expose the core. Uh, and then I also have it sharpened on this end. So if I need a sharp point, I've got that. I've got my shading stump. Uh, I've got kneaded eraser and a rubber eraser. Um, and then Nia, you were asking a really good question about the difference between vine charcoal and willow charcoal. Um, and honestly, I don't know a, if there's a significant difference. I use them interchangeably. They're both very soft. Um, they're, they're, uh, they, they work very similarly. One is just made from grapevines and the other is made from kind of willow sticks, but they're made in a very similar process. Um, and they, they can vary in terms of their hardness. And so you wanna find kind of what works for you um, in that. But if you have willow charcoal and I say vine, it's gonna work just the same. I use them in the same uh, manner. Um, if, if something does happen with the live stream, uh, sometimes the internet might just drop for a second. So if you see me drop, then um, you know just hang on for a few seconds. It'll it'll come back up. Um, I, I also I was having some issues with audio earlier, and I think it's working out okay. But if anything um, happens, let me know. <laughs> so like I said, I'll do, I'm going to do my best to monitor the situation. So um, looking at this image. I, I went into this drawing anticipating that it was going to be a challenge, but I wasn't quite sure in what. I, I, in general, I was thinking it's really all about that light, the idea of that, th these, these structures being in shadow underneath the cliff there, um, and in that strong contrast between light on this side and shadow over here. And it, it was about that, but I think the, the big takeaway that I think is gonna be most helpful for many of you is a strategy, and in, in, in particular, a strategy for managing the scale and the proportions of these buildings here. So what I wanna to try to do throughout this is focus on that as much as possible. How do we keep everything the, the generally the right scale in the right place and how do we keep our mind focused and sharp so that we don't lose control of where we're at because there is a lot going on in the scene and I saw that some of you posted that as well as that this looks like a, a, a relatively in, intimidating scene and so what I'd like to do is hopefully reduce some of that intimidation by giving you a strategy that's going to work for this drawing as well as others. Um, we have um, quite a bit of variety in terms of texture. So we've got the rocks, we've got the brick buildings uh, underneath here, and then we've got the trees. Uh, and, and as you can see, what I've done down here is really just suggested the trees. I try to create some contrast between the manner with which I, I created these buildings and the marks there, and then these. Um, and if we provide just enough detail it, it's enough for the brain to accept it and move beyond it, fill in the missing gaps and, uh, in terms of the texture and the detail um, and, and really start to engage itself. So that's, those are a lot of the things that we're going to be covering through, throughout this whole drawing. So if you're ready, let's jump right in and 
what I'm what I have in front of me is I've got the digital image in front that I'm going to be working from. It's vertical. This is a bit of an, of an angle, and I tried to move this around with it being fairly small. And there's some fine detail. I may be dipping my head into the shot, so <laughs> I'm going to do my best to keep that back. But just know that it's is coming. Um, so um, let's see. I see some additional. Um, questions here. I have charcoal, but it's light, medium, and dark. So um, now, Art, you're asking that question. For this one, it, we don't really need a huge value range. Um, so I, if you wanted to go with the light, I think that's going to give you what you need in terms of the charcoal. Um, but in general, you know, I think having available the greatest range possible is generally helpful. So you might try the dark and see how it goes. Generally, what happens is that light also correlates with the hardness of the materials as part of what makes it a lighter mark, so that it's harder. And so um, that gives you a bit more detail and more control. And so if you, if you require that for this drawing, then you might lean towards the light one. Um, that's one of the other things too that I encountered with this drawing that the preparatory one is is how to manage the detail and where to put the detail where can we rely on suggestion um, and hopefully throughout this process if, if you follow this process here it's setting you up for you to be in control of how much detail you add um, so as, if you've been following along throughout this whole series you're going to know that I like to work uh, in a manner that allows us to uh, work uh, very kind of broadly and build up the whole drawing at once um, rather than finish as we go. Um, so with that in mind, if we follow this process and, and you would like to take it a little bit farther in detail than I do, uh, then, you know, then you'll be set up to do that for this. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully that makes sense, but feel free to uh, you know, call out additional questions. And I, and I try to do my best to um, describe what I'm doing throughout the whole process. Um, but if I'm missing something that you think is kind of critical, uh, just, you know, feel free to call that out. Um, so what I'm doing right now, though, is I'm, I'm trying to block in the big shape of light and shadow. So if I squint my eyes it, and, and I'm looking at the reference photo, it, it eliminates a lot of that detail. Uh, and it helps me to see just a real basic shape. And so I'm looking at this area here where there's sky, we've got the large rock formation, and then we've got the light down in here. Uh, and creating that initial distinction between shadow and light is going to be really helpful as we get through the drawing. Because what can happen if we, if we adopt a process where we finish as we go, so say I work in this area and I bring it to completion and then move over to here, bring it to completion, uh, there's it's very difficult to control the, the overall um, value range, really, really the distinction between light and shadow. And so what could happen is the stuff that we draw that's in the shadow could pop forward and we lose that sense of depth and unity. So I'm trying to create and, and start from a, a place where everything is unified by the light and then pulling out the, uh, the detail. Uh, so I'm just using the, the side of my hand to kind of smooth out the paper. This is a cotton rag paper um, that has a really nice tooth to it. Um, but if you have any charcoal paper, paper that'll work just fine. Um, I see some questions right now. Oh, right now I'm using just a soft vine charcoal. Actually, you know, you can see that this one's been really filed down. And I'm glad you called that out because it kind of... I had intended to use this later. This is going to be the one that I'm going to use for all the, the suggestion of the trees because it has these really nice edges here. Um, so I'm going to grab a, a new stick right here. And I don't know if, I don't know if you can hear <laughs> Tibble the cat through the door here making some noise. He really wants to join us, but um, I think he would end up on the table. Uh, <laughs> he's awesome. Um, so let's see. So what I'm Again, this is the vine charcoal I'm utilizing on its side. So this is what we refer to as an overhand um, grip. Uh, you know, where if you if you place the material on the table and you just pick it up with your fingertips, that's essentially overhand. Versus the tripod, which is 
um, how we hold a pencil when we write. This gives you the greatest amount of control, um, but a little bit more challenging to control in terms of detail, and it engages the tip of the pencil, um, which tends to early on kind of emboss or embed itself in the, the paper. So that's why I'd like to use the side of the pencil um, and the, the materials as I go through. Uh, so as I'm going through, again, I'm keeping my eyes kind of light, and lightly focused, you know, just blurred out. And I'm starting to indicate kind of rough orientation points. Um, one of the things that might be helpful is to identify where the center of the image is. Um, and then you can orient that yourself um, relative to that, to that on your paper. And so in this case, there are three kind of buildings that really kind of stand up here. Um, they're kind of right in right in here. If I mark this as the center of the paper, um, I can uh, figure out where that is in the reference image and and just try to make a mental note. And I'm probably going to forget that as I go uh, because that's you know, we're going to be engaged with a lot of stuff <laughs> throughout this drawing. So I'm sure I'm going to forget it. Uh, at this early stage, I'm thinking very gesturally, so it's about reacting to the image in front of me, and I'm, it's what's more important to me at this stage is wrapping my head around the the scope of the drawing um, rather than uh, any sort of detail here. What are going to be some of the challenges? One of the challenges is going to be to maintain uh, the the shadow structure here. Um, and then as we move across, there are scale um, variations that we need to address. You know, these rocks are quite a bit farther away over here, so I want to make sure that that scale um, is correct there. Uh, and what I'd like to do is um, maintain that, that observation of the shape of light and shadow um, in, into some of these smaller areas as well. We can see the light coming in from this side and where the rock kind of comes out a little bit, it catches the shadow where it's fairly vertical or undercut, then it will, then it, it falls into shadow. Um, so this it catches the light where it comes out, falls into shadow where it's vertical. And I think maintaining a sense of the scale is really critical. Because what can happen when we, when we look back in here, when our mind is engaged with this stuff, and we lose sense of this, what, whatever's happening over here tends to be, be feel larger. It's taking up a larger portion of our minds. Uh, so it tends to feel larger than it actually is. And so we, we want to be careful and constantly be checking in um, the scale of the marks here relative to what's happening over in this side. All right, so I think there's, what's interesting is there's this little dark spot right under here that is right smack in the middle of the page, uh, up a little bit. I think I maybe drew that too low. And I want to start to kind of just suggest the, the buildings. Again, with my eyes out of focus, I'm just looking for shapes of light and dark. And I'm going to need to trust that if I put them in the right spot, and they're generally the right size, that, there's, that it's going to start to look like uh, the, the buildings. And it's going to look like the buildings in the end. Now with this fine charcoal, I also know that this is all, it's a very light material and it's going to be um, temporary. It's all going to be adjusted later on. So I'm just kind of starting to lay out some things. Um, and if you are new, you wouldn't have heard me say this, but I think um, if, you, if you've been with the series for a while now, then this is a concept that you, you uh, will most likely be familiar with, is the idea that at this stage, it's all about getting information on the page. And you try to get it correct, but you know that throughout the process, everything is going to, to evolve. But it's helpful to have something on the page that you can then use to um, adjust. With, with information now on the page, you can make very 
specific decisions about where things need to change, how they need to change, you know, where they need to move to, do they need to get larger or smaller, um, you know, move left, right, etc. So, um, one of the other things too to note is that that sky in value is darker than a lot of the lights down in here. So I'm not worried about kind of protecting the value up in here. But there is an, a distinct a distinct shift from the light striking here on top of the cliff to underneath it. Um, all right, so I just need to kind of orient myself. I'm gonna do my best to, to continue talking through what I'm doing, but this is also, I, I, I know that <laughs> this is a, a, a challenge, there's a lot going on, so there, I'm gonna have a, a, a tendency to get focused, um, which, um, may prevent me from talking for a little bit. And there's a really distinct shadow line here. And as you can see, I'm trying to think in terms of shape, not line throughout this. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a reason for that that I, I want to kind of explain, as, especially as we go a little bit farther. But ultimately, again, we want everything to be unified by that light. Um, that was what was really profound in going to this place is, is that it, the, the light is so intense and so hot. This is in southwest Colorado, uh, right in the Four Corners region. And it, it, yeah, it's hard to describe how intense that is. <laughs> you know, growing up on the East Coast, you know, it's, I, I don't think I ever really understood how intense the sun could feel. And then when you're in this space, we're in these, these canyons on this mesa uh, uh, where, they, where these dwellings were built underneath the rock. Um, you, can, you feel the temperature, you can feel that contrast, and you understand how important the sun was and managing your relationship to the sun was. And so, um, so that's ultimately what, what I, I really liked about this. Is an, and I want to create that in this drawing as well, is, is make it clear what that the, the shape of the light and the shadow is, is a key feature in this drawing. Ah, did you hear the meowing? <laughs> No, no, that was that was Tybalt here, I believe. I had to kick him out of this room. He was he spent all morning down here, and I don't think he was very happy about that. So, um, all right. So here are here we are. So I'm feeling pretty good about this, right? So we can see the rough map taking shape. And again, if we if we adopt that mindset uh, that um, we're we're building everything up at once, hopefully at this point it's starting to reference the, the space, and we could essentially stop right now, and, and, and we'd have at least a loose understanding of, of what this space is. Uh, and so, at, at this point now, it's just really a matter of going through and refining. Um, but I think it's really important that we are skeptical about the, um, the the scale of everything that we've we've placed down here, um, because uh, if we if we assume that everything is correct and it's not, you know, we haven't spent much time really locking in any of these proportions, and so I I don't trust any of them at this at this point. So I need to be willing to adjust everything, you know. So again, this is the this is the puzzle analogy that uh, many of you have heard me say multiple times before, where you know when we put together a jigsaw puzzle. Um, you know, for the most part, in, 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 unless you're a, a rare and exceptional person, you know, you know, what we do is we take all, a bunch of pieces, we pour them out on the table, and then as we gather information about what's on each piece, we kind of move them around, and eventually the image comes together. And that's what, the way we want to approach our marks. We're putting marks on the surface here, and then as we gather information about what we're observing, we want to move those marks uh, and, and eventually the image will all fall into place. The, the, the concept of kind of finishing as you go would be akin to reaching into the box of a puzzle, 
looking at the piece, knowing exactly where it goes in the context of the image, putting it there and never moving it again. Um, and you know, I'm sure there are people that can do that, but it, for the most part, you know, I know for me, I, could, I would never be able to do something like that. Um, I, you need to generally move those pieces around, gather information, and then, um, and then build an understanding of that image from there. Uh, what I'm doing down in here is I'm just suggesting some of the trees here so that um, I, as I'm making these marks um, and as I'm adjusting things here, that there's some sort of context to it. Uh, that you know there, there's something in the trees there, and I may have to move those trees around a little bit, but there's something there that I can kind of react to. All right, I, wanna, I like that, that cloud back in there. So just using the kneaded eraser, kind of suggesting those forms and not being super picky with those. Um, uh, Daz M, I'm glad this is working for you. Um, Recovering Soul, you just watched a documentary. Yeah, that's a, it's a really fascinating place. Uh, you know, I had never been down there and I remember, you know, growing up in Maine, I studied this in elementary school and I had, it just, it made no sense to me. <laughs> like it seemed so foreign. Uh, so it was really cool to come out here and see it in real life. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to work my way from the background forward. Um, and I've got a rough, um, rough placement of these forms here that I think are generally correct. Um, but I'm going to start with this um, rock back in here. Uh, and I'm using my compressed charcoal pencil. And you can kind of see the way I hold it. I have it su supported by, between my fingers here, um, and then I can use these two fingers, my middle finger and my thumb, to help stabilize it. Um, and, and that keeps the, the, the charcoal on its side, and it gives me the kind of control that I would have if I were to hold it like I'm, like I'm writing on this tripod grip. So I have that same amount of control, I just have the side of the pencil engaged. Um, and as I do that, that means that that tip, that point, is always going to remain sharp. Uh, because, you know, I'm just I'm constantly kind of filing it. And as I'm going, I'm kind of rolling it in my fingers here so that I keep this relatively rounded. If I forget that, then what happens is it flattens out on one spot and then I get these ridges kind of on the sides of that pencil core that you know, then I just have to contend with later. Um, doing a little bit of negative drawing, I want to suggest those trees. And one of the things I really love is this really thin uh, suggestion of a light on that rock, on top of the rock back there. And so using the kneaded eraser, I kind of erased out that line and it's overstated, it's too thick. So I need to cut, I'm just gonna cut that in by working up to it to find that thin edge. And then right in here, one of the things that's also challenging is you can see the variations um, from the, those, those dark rain marks. Um, you can see that on the rock and that can kind of throw off our understanding of the values. So at this point, try to be focused on the shape of the light and shadow and don't be too concerned with the specifics of the texture in the rock. Let's try to build from the, build the structure from a sense, an understanding of, of light and shadow. But then uh, we, you know, we're going to go back in later and, um, and, and add those variations there. And as with you know every drawing that I that I've you know completed here, you know you decide for yourself what your tolerance is in terms of accuracy. And now um, you know getting those proportions 100% correct. So you know I may I may end up getting things wrong. And you know if I if I wasn't doing this live, I might take a bit more time correcting proportions. Um, and so I may be off a little bit, but um, again, you, you want to decide for yourself what that tolerance is. Uh, so as I'm, one of the things you're going to see me do throughout this whole drawing is, you know, I'm placing these marks 
it's it's difficult for for me to kind of describe what what my mind is doing, but I want to want to try to do that here because a lot of what happens, you know, it's, it becomes second nature, it becomes a habit, and so I want to do my best to remember that I, I want to describe ultimately what's happening. Uh, when I'm placing a mark, what I'm doing is making a, a quick mental check-in of where I am relative to other things. Now, I, I've started suggesting other forms in the drawing, and it's not 100% accurate, but they're, they're in the ballpark. And so as I'm making this mark, what I'm doing is I'm looking up and down to see what's below that mark. If I were to, that's, it's, we refer to that as a plumb line in drawing. You know, so I, I met, draw a mental plumb line down here and I see what's below that. I also run horizontally and I see what cuts through that. Um, and then I look for other landmarks. So I look at some of these buildings that I started to establish and I look at that angle. So that's called angle sighting. Um, and I'm doing that mentally and I'm just kind of um, doing a quick check-in to make sure I'm in the right spot. Uh, and then as I'm working my way up the side of the cliff here, I'm looking at the angle up from the reference photo and I'm looking back and forth and I'm just double checking as I go. Uh, so what I'm doing when I look at the reference photo is I'm making an observation and I'm kind of holding that angle or that placement or the scale of the mark in my mind and then doing a quick check-in when I look at the paper to make sure I'm in the right spot. So, um, uh, Maddie's mom, the dark streaks are called desert, is that vanish? I wonder if that's supposed to be varnish, but that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, what, I, what we learned about this place is, is how, how important water is to this. And there are these spots where they could collect water that was being filtered through the stone. Really awesome. Um, if, if it's safe to travel there, I think, you know, I'd always encourage people to check that out. It's a cool spot. Hello from Spain, um, Shanolin. I, I do use other mediums. So in this drawing series, I've been mostly utilizing um, graphite or charcoal. Uh, but myself, you know, personally, I'm an oil painter. And so I started this drawing series um, as a way to help kind of share my uh, my practice of drawing all to help me improve my painting skills. Um, I, I recognized that I had neglected drawing for a significant amount of time and it was affecting my painting. So I am, you know, I started drawing here. We started launching live to kind of share that and build a community around drawing that hopefully helps us develop skills that we can utilize in other media. And so what I'm doing now is just kind of doing a rough block in of that light across the top here that's catching. So we have shadow underneath, we have the light catching, and then we have that sky behind there. And I'm gonna have to do some adjusting of those values there, but at this point, I mostly just wanna get the, the rough shape and size of these forms. Um, and as you can see how far back I, I hold the pencil, um, the weight of the pencil itself can convey a lot of information. You don't need to bear down on it. It's very natural for us to want to do that, to really bear down on a pencil. Um, but I think once you get comfortable just relying on the weight of the pencil, you can really increase your tonal range um, because you have everything from the you know the lightest touch of just the weight of the material to then the you know the darkest dark when you really bear down. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of building up these values. In a way, I'm kind of replacing the vine charcoal with the compressed charcoal. Charcoal, just getting a a layer of the compressed charcoal on there. So we're already a half an hour in. I think we, this may take a bit. <laughs> this may be a long one. I'm going to do my best to get through this fairly quickly. Um, but I have a feeling that we're going to be here for a while, really going to get you know, locking in on this, this drawing. Now I'm utilizing the side of my hand to, to blend like that, just to help prevent oils from my fingertips from um, reacting to 
uh, you know, through the paper. So if I just use my fingertips there, um, gives you a little bit more control, but there's a risk when you do that to uh, that uh, the oils from your fingertips would affect that or affect the paper. Um, all right, so now I have my shading stump. Uh, this is the, the one tool that I um, had neglected for far too long. I had made a major assumption about a shading stump in that, um, you know, in my mind, I was thinking a shading stump is all about just smoothing out your marks. And I just didn't have time for that in my thinking. Um, and But I, I gave it a shot for this series, and now it has become one of my most favorite tools um, it, because what I realized is that it has so much potential to contribute to the form. Um, and it, one of the mantras that we have in this class is that you always want to be contributing to the form, uh, whether you're using an eraser or whether you're using uh, a shading stump, you know, of course, or your charcoal, you have an opportunity to refine the form and state your observations. So as I'm as I'm kind of blending in this area here, I'm thinking about the flow of the, of the rocks, I'm thinking about the scale and the proportions, and I'm also just picking up charcoal with this. And then once I have charcoal on there, I can move to this light area, and, and I can use that to actually um, block in some of, these, uh, some of these forms and start to correct uh, some of the, the proportions here. So it's a, it's a lovely tool and it kind of, it knocks things down a little bit. Uh, and I, and it just like with the charcoal, I'm utilizing it on its side, um, not the point of it. Keeping my eyes, um, keeping my eyes soft and out of focus. Using the kneaded eraser to pull out um, some of the lights here. Taking mental note of some of that shadow varnish. It's so awesome that we learned that term. And, and I just love, like, just, just like that, you know, you can, through the suggestion of light and shadow, create that area. And now from this, we can add, we can continue to add detail, but that, this process, this mindset puts you in control of that. Um, and not necessarily take, um, take the desire for detail as a given. And I see that with a lot of students is that the assumption is, is that more detail, more detail is better. Um, but that's not always the case. It is, it is for some artists, but not for all. So what, and what I like about the, the kneaded eraser is that you can kind of pinch it, twist it, and kind of shape, shape the forms a little bit. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm basically just pinching it into a wedge so that I have the ability to create a broad mark as well as a fine one. So it's a very similar to kind of a paintbrush. Is, oh, Nia is asking, is form synonymous with shape? They are very similar. Uh, shape is generally refers to a two-dimensional um, element on your paper. Form is three-dimensional. And so that's, the, uh, that's kind of the distinction. So when you're thinking in terms of form, you're thinking about creating a three-dimensional um, understanding a representation of the of the object where a shape is its two-dimensional um, form on two-dimensional element I guess on the on the paper all right I kind of like what's happening back there and I may not go any any farther in terms of that detail um, what we see here though and what I like about using the shading stump here is I can start to suggest some of the forms in here in the light area um, without overstating it. And so in general, what I'm thinking about is 
um, separating the value range in the light side from the value range in the shadow side. Uh, so that, you know, we, the darkest we're going to go is something like this, which is kind of a middle gray when we're in the light. And then the lightest we're going to go maybe in the shadow side is that middle gray. And then, so as I'm, as I'm just kind of blocking in some of these forms in here, you know, I'm kind of paying attention to how much charcoal is loaded onto the shading stump. And there's a lot happening in here where you see these kind of multiple layers that have been built out of those bricks. Um, and at this point, I'm not thinking too much about accuracy. I'm trying to treat them as abstract forms um, and then trusting that if I get the scale and the placement right it's going to suggest those tiers. Um, and I, so far it seems to be holding up okay. And I'm using, utilizing this reference line and as I'm making these marks, again I'm making that mental check-in, where am I relative to some of these other marks that I've made? Where am I relative to su the suggestion of some of those buildings that are starting to form over in this area? Uh, so again, this comes back around to a strategy and how do we manage all of this detail? How do we move through a complex scene and keep in control? And that's really at the heart of it is that you're constantly doing a check-in. Um, and as you do that, it becomes more second nature and you don't have to think about it as much. But initially, you may have to intentionally um, remind yourself to do that check-in. All right, so I'm, and, and, and I'm kind of trying to forget about the trees in this area because then I can build the trees in on top of it a little bit later. All right, let's see. I think that's, that's working out all right. And so right now I can kind of see, I'm, what I'm looking at is the, the screen in front of me projects this camera uh, so I can see what it looks like vertically. Um, and so far the depth seems to be holding up okay. All right. I see, looks like I see Carol is hard at work <laughs> monitoring the thread. So thank you, Carol, blocking some comments. I appreciate you all for you know, we, it's, it's just going to happen. We're going to get people that join us that um, would like to make their voices heard in some way in, in a less than constructive manner. Um, so I appreciate you all just kind of ignoring that and we can just stay focused on drawing. But, um, all right. What I'm doing now is I'm kind of, I'm filling in this area. I'm just kind of smoothing this out a little bit and it, this is really for my benefit of, of my focus because I need to I need to understand what's going on here, get my head in the game. I got a little distracted. I could tell that I wasn't really focusing, and so I'm trying to bring myself back around into focus. All right. Uh, so what is going to be really helpful right now? I, I like it. So what I'm going to do is I need to find again the center of the image. So if you have your image in front of you, you can use sight measuring to determine in the reference where the, what, what is at the center of it, um, particularly if you measure along this horizontal axis. Um, and there is this, that there's this kind of square-ish building. There's this taller tower here. And then there's this lower square-ish one that's kind of right in the center. So if I indicate the center here, what I can start to do is kind of build my way out. And then what we're going to try to do is, you know, if we, if we know that the, that square-ish building in here is, to, is in the center, and we have this art rock already established, we can subdivide this section here and, uh, and use that as a reference for this. 
uh, for the rest of these buildings here. So we have that tallish tower here. We have this shadow form in here, another tower. And what I'm trying to do is suggest those forms without drawing an outline as much as possible. Um, and I started to get to that point where it starts to look like an outline, and so I need to amend that a little bit um, because outlines will flatten that space. It'll, 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 it has the potential to um, lead to a lack of harmony and unity in the drawing. Again, we want the light to unify everything together, and um, if we rely on linear marks, uh, contour lines essentially to, um, to define a form, then it's going to kind of pop off the page. There are these two kind of crevices in here that are really cool. And I think I can put in there. So one of the, the things that I like about utilizing the side of the pencil to draw with is, is it, um, it favors drawing in terms of shape rather than line. Oh, there's a cool little strip of light right here on top of that rock. Um, so if you're erasing out forms, you know, the, the eraser that I have is it's kind of a blunt object. So if you need a fine, um, kind of highlight, you know, don't be afraid to kind of erase out a high, larger mark and then kind of cut that back in, refine it from there. Actually, I grabbed the wrong pencil. That's kind of my short one. Okay. All right. So here's that, that center square-ish one. Got my marks over here. This is going to be kind of a bit of a landmark, the, the space between these light areas. I may, I may refine those a little bit more a bit later. But I think what we can do now is start to map out other parts of these buildings, uh, again, in that, with the objective that we're trying to build up the whole drawing and not get bogged down in the details too early. So now if we take the distance from this center building to the edge, we can, um, we have this other landmark, we have this other tower over here and it's, it's not quite in the middle between these buildings. It's a little bit over to the right. So I'm going to put it in there just a little bit over to the right of center between those. And then we may have to, in order to make that visible, this is that round building up here. Some buildings up here. But again, if we if we kind of give ourselves these landmarks, now we have this region established, and then we can further subdivide that with the details that are in there. So hopefully the strategy is starting to make sense where you're starting from big, kind of finding the center, continually breaking up that form, giving yourselves um, smaller regions to work within. So then as we as we start to add the details, uh, where we don't have to worry about getting too lost. So now that if I've got these two buildings established, I can look at the space between them and refine them and, and be generally confident in the scale, in the, in the placement of those. Um, and now one of the things we also want to be careful about is that our eyes, our eyes are going to be calibrating to the value relationships in, in, uh, on, on the paper. You know, so we're going to interpret these values as being darker than they actually are. Um, and we know that we're going to go even darker in some of these areas. Maybe block that form in there. There's this cool little strip of light on that 
and that wedge there. And I rough that in. Um, so you can see that that was kind of an intentional decision to start here, move over here, come back here. I'm constantly darting around. And for a long time, I was kind of self-conscious about that, 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 you know, kind of beating myself for not being able to stay focused and working on uh, one area at a time. But then I, I realized that it's actually a gift. <laughs> it's really helpful to be able to do that because what would happen is I would, as if, when I would force myself to stay focused on one area, I would get to this point where it was mostly done and I realized that it's not in the right spot, or it's not the right scale, or something else was thrown off in the drawing. And then I had just committed myself to spending, you know, two hours refining this one spot that isn't correct. Um, and so I kind of leaned in on my, my natural tendency to dart all over the drawing. Um, and it proved to be more effective because um, I, I was sneaking up on the subject more effectively. Hopefully that makes sense. How's everybody doing? Everybody following along okay? Nia, yeah, you're, uh, that's awesome that you're gonna uh, try one out at your local community college. That's fantastic. I look forward to hearing how that goes. All right, so I'm just, Kind of again now I'm kind of darting all over the place. Um, again, when I'm um, when I'm looking at the reference photo, I'm trying to make very specific observations, and when I'm looking at the paper, I'm mostly concerned with where I'm at and making sure I'm in the right spot in general. Um, a question, yeah, uh, we, this is um, charcoal. You'll find a list of the materials in the description below, as well as the reference image. Um, and you're going to notice that there are all these details, there are these buttresses, there are these little windows and doors that we're going to forget about those for now. Um, I'm mostly, you know, I want to try to get a sense for where they're going to be, make sure that there's nothing that stands out as being off. So, you know, as I work my way down, I'm seeing these levels of these buildings and as I do that, I'm looking at some of the other references in, uh, in that area. So as I make the right side, I'm looking at where that is relative to this wall here. The left side, I'm looking at where it's relative to this building and it's kind of in line with this edge along here. So it doesn't take much time to do one of those quick mental check-ins, but it can be a huge thing because it's so easy just to get locked in on that shape and kind of lose a sense of the context and where it is. Um, one of the things that's also was really kind of stood out when I did that initial drawing was the power of thinking in terms of positive and negative space. If that's not a term that you're familiar with, positive space is any, when you're drawing the object, negative space is when you're drawing the, the, the space around it. And sometimes the space around an object is another object, but it has to do with your mindset. What are you, what are you drawing? And so um, sometimes you can accurate, more accurately render an object by drawing the space around it. Um, and so it's, it's helpful to be thinking both in terms of positive space and negative space. And then there's this cool little, these, these cool little areas right in here. Let's see. Um, and then in general, I try to, try to keep these marks light. I'm kind of more tapping across the page. So I have my, my wrist uh, resting on the edge of this easel that gives me a little bit of support. And I'm trying to visualize the path that I'm going to be following along and then dropping the charcoal in along that path. Let's see, there's, this is that. 
like that little highlight. There's a light that strikes here. Just like they did in other areas, I'm going to overstate that light and then I'm going to drop in that shadow. And this, this form in here is a little bit, a little bit messed up, but that's all right. I can, one of the things that also can happen is that, you know, we kind of work our way across a form. You know, we're going to work from one form, work to the next work to work to the next and then we come out the other end and we check out where we're at relative to other things and we find that we're, you know, our scale or proportions are off that way as well. So that may be happening. Yeah, there's just a lot going on in this area. So I need to get my thoughts in order. And if, I need to figure out where I need to add some definition because we don't need to do it across the whole thing. If we go in here and we start drawing every outline, it's going to overwhelm the drawing and everything is going to flatten out. So we just want to be just very, very tentative in this area. When there's a lot going on, see if we can suggest as much as possible. Now there's a bit of a trick to using the, um, the kneaded eraser, especially to get like a fine line. Um, and what I found is that, you know, if you can, if you can kind of file it down to kind of a, a sharp edge or a point, kind of place it on the page and just kind of, just lightly kind of vibrate it. It can do a fairly effective job at, at lifting material. Um, but otherwise, it's such a soft material that you can um, that it can it comes some, sometimes kind of distort and kind of twist and soften into the page. So even with these small areas. I'm doing that same mental check-in before I make that place that object. Where am I relative to other forms in there? All right, I'm going to move across. Let's see, looking for other large areas of dark. I'm going to, ooh, there's a kind of a buttress. in here, so I'm going to start to suggest the forms. And so hopefully what you, what you saw me do there is this is the check-in. If, if, this, if this edge of the building is correct, and then I need to place this just below it to the left a little bit. So th that's what I was thinking about at that point. And then these areas here where it's more recessed into the shadow, I'm being less concerned with the, um, the, the hardness of the edge, the clarity along that edge. So I'm going to kind of suggest this buttress here. There's this one here that kind of comes in triangularly. Did I just, I think I just invented a word there. back to here. I'm not going to worry about the windows because I'm going to come back to those uh, later. I don't want I don't want to waste my time on that if any of these things are in the wrong spot. So this is just requiring a little bit more focus so I apologize for these long stretches of silence. Um, If you are drawing along, I'd love to hear how this is going. This is a good opportunity to step back from your work and evaluate things. I think that tower needs to move over a little bit. 
one of the things I like about charcoal is look how easily we can just kind of wipe that away um, and make, make some adjustments. The way I like to think about it is almost like I'm drawing in sand, like, um, you know, like we can just, just take it out and try it again. All right, there's this. Move it around. Wondering if Professor Blue is with us today. Miss all the questions. Give us lots of things to think about. All right. Just kind of really trying to just focus on these shapes, thinking about them in terms of, in terms of shape. And I want to be careful. You saw me erase out this form, but I want to be careful not to pull out too much value. So I don't want the I want the uh, the uh, the lightest light to be um, darker than the dark parts on this side here. So we have a distinct um, value range. Kind of, but I am going to erase out this this tower here, that form there. Let's use my fingertips, which I said earlier was the thing I'm trying to avoid. And so as I'm doing this too, like I'm, as I'm making these marks, I'm checking in with these other objects. So if I take a horizontal line and I carry it across, generally I think I'm in the right spot. So. I'm not too worried. I feel like I'm, I'm staying generally in alignment with the proportions. So this is an HB pencil and I can really feel the hardness of it compared to a, a soft charcoal or maybe you know, something that might be a 4B or 6B. Again, that's okay. because so we don't need really rich darks in this drawing. Moving across here, I'm just, I want to map out these uh, shapes here and I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding what's actually happening. So I need to trust the shapes that I'm seeing, the shapes of light and dark. Because I, I can't quite wrap my head around the architecture here. Hopefully we can see this, this kind of forming on here. And again, in keeping with that mindset that we sh we're kind of finishing as we go, we're, we're building up the whole drawing at once, I feel like we could stop now and somebody could look at this and understand what it is where we've drawn. Even if we don't make the uh, you know, specific observations about the details, we understand what the subject is and we understand it from a, an under a, a, a position of light and shadow. Um, and then, then it's a matter of now continuing to refine and add additional details. All right, so there's some kind of finer elements in here, but I need to make sure that it's um, uh, in the correct context of, you know, these other elements. So in this case, the this kind of tower up here. So I'm going to work my way down seeing what's directly below this tower. So it's, it's a, when I'm looking at the paper, I'm first thinking, where am I on the page? And then once I, I feel like I'm in the right spot, I kind of strike by drawing the form
And if we trust the shape of the lights and darks, then, you know, an understanding of light and shadow will, will follow. The forms, the forms will be built out of that. All right, now there's a lot going on in this area. <laughs> so if, now we've basically, we've, we've created this ring around that area and hopefully everything is the right scale. Um, so as we, as we work our way through it, I'm gonna start to map out, I'm gonna place the kind of the buttresses. Relative to the forms, looking at what's directly above it. Um, what's below it. This is, oh, I see, okay, got a little bit lost there. If you're lost, stop, kind of take stock of where you are. I was out painting this morning and that happened a lot. Um, I would look up at the scene and it would take me a few seconds to kind of reorient myself and say, where am I, where am I looking? Because it was such an expansive view that I was easily lost when I came back up to look at the reference. So any, or at the, you know, in this case I was painting a, mountain and so I needed to orient myself, take some time, make an observation and then come back to the painting, make sure I'm in the right spot and then apply that observation. Um, Michelle is asking, when do I use the hard or soft charcoal Honestly, I, in this case, I'm using the harder charcoal because I know I don't need that, um, that strong uh, value contrast. Um, but in general, what happens is I tend to get absorbed into the drawing and I, <laughs> I kind of forget that I can even switch. And so um, I know some artists that work very kind of logically um, in, you know, in, you know, starting with a harder pencil, then gradually moving to something that's darker, just maybe a harder, lighter material in the background where there's less contrast to create additional depth, um, and then moving towards softer, darker marks uh, as you move forward. But I, I don't know, I, I have a hard time maintaining that. I get kind of lost in, um, in, the, in the process. And so I think if I, I kind of, basically I take a material as far as I can go. And then, so with this one, it's a relatively hard charcoal. And if it's just not giving me what I need, then I'll, it'll probably be a trigger that I need to switch to something that is, you know, a little bit softer. But I usually let the drawing kind of prompt that Um, so hopefully you can see this all forming and again looking at the darks lights and if you get lost You know try to just trust the scale um, and the placement of your marks and, and, and trust that Even if it looks abstract on the paper that it's all going to piece together and the mind is going to accept it as a As a drawing of these cliff dwellings the mind is constantly looking to make sense of things and so you know, it's it's ready to do a lot of work. <laughs> and so um, it, we don't have to necessarily be too explicit with rendering and adding detail. You know, it it wants to contribute to that. And, and it gets excited um, when it pieces together the detail that doesn't necessarily exist. And so um, I like to think about it as, as though you're not depriving the mind of an opportunity to challenge itself. Um, and that's one of the reasons I kind of, I, I tend to uh, gravitate towards things that are less detailed, if that makes sense. Sorry, I'm, I'm sure there are some questions that are coming up that I need to take a look at, but I'm kind of, kind of absorbed in this right now. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to, to come back around to it. Okay. 
Um, just going to check here. It looks like I missed some. Uh, Adele, hopefully we'll give this a try tomorrow. This is this is definitely one that is um, it requires perhaps a bit more patience. I don't know if that's the right word, um, but just a bit, perhaps a bit more focus. Um, and one of the things, again, I like to think about is a phrase that I use a lot with my students is the idea that marks are thoughts, right? So um, the, the, you know, the pace of your observations can influence your drawing um, and vice versa. You know, so as you slow down your marks, it helps to slow down your thinking, slow down your observations. As you slow down your observations, it might slow down your thoughts or you speed them up, etc. So um, and then the, the scenes themselves can kind of lend themselves to one pace of, of thinking. And in this case, because there's so much going on, it kind of forces the, the instinct to just kind of slow down. All right, let me think here. What do I want to do? All right, I'm going to leave this work up here. So I feel like everything is form forming in the shadows. It feels like it has structure. It feels like it's integrated. And that's really what you, what, it, you know, what the experience is like uh, in person here. Um, you know, there were some of these cliff dwellings you'd see on the opposite side of this canyon. And if a ranger hadn't pointed it out, I just, I don't know as if I ever would have noticed it. It's, they're so integrated into the spaces. So here, this is all in light. Um, and so I want to keep those, the value structure, um, in accordance with that. Let's see. So I want to, even these darker areas, the, the, what's it, the varnish we learned about. Actually, I think what I want to do is I want to, def I need, I think I need a line in here to define this edge rather than that value. I think how, I like how that, that sharpens up that edge. Um, I need to define this edge along in here. So as I'm making these marks, you can see I'm utilizing the side of the pencil and I'm rolling it in my fingers here. And I'm trying to pay attention to where that edge is sharp and where is it more diffused. And so right in here, for example, it's more diffused, gradually gets a little bit sharper, more defined along this edge but we get really crisp lines here. And I may be off on that. I feel like I'm off, but I want to move this drawing along a little ways. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time really correcting this. So as I'm making these marks, I'm looking at the, the marks that on the, in the reference photo, and I'm also double checking where I am relative to the building here. So if I've locked myself in on the proportions of that building, I'm doing a mental check-in to make sure I'm in the right spot. Also thinking about the flow and the structure of the rocks here and running my marks along that, that contour. You know, now, now imagine that this is a three-dimensional object on the page. How would the pencil move across that surface? Again, utilizing the side. And what that does is it, it helps to simulate the texture. So we really interpret it as texture not as a line. If we think about this as a line and we draw it as a line, that's an indication to the mind that that's a contour, that is the edge of an object. And then it gets really confusing. The mind says, wait, what? I thought we were in the shadow. I thought we were on a rock. And now you're drawing a line that says that we're on a different form. Uh, and so we, that's where the, the ability to control your edges and be mindful of lines it comes in um, really handy. So I'm just using this, the power of suggestion here to suggest the texture, letting the paper, letting the, the charcoal just kind of scrape across the paper, letting the tooth of the paper do a bit of work itself. And then along in here, there's 
it gets really kind of crazy. I'm trying to figure out what's going on in there. All right. Oh, here we have that varnish. We, this is where we first started talking about varnishes right in here. Drawing that in the shadow. So if we've built it from an understanding of light and shadow, then it should kind of trap that texture onto that surface. So hopefully that texture is, is reading, it feels like it's reading all right. Um, as always, you know, I, I welcome observations, you know, so if you see something that's off that you really need me to correct, you know, feel free to shout that out. Um, I welcome those. That's been a huge part of, especially when we get to the portrait work where I'm less adept. Um, and doing a, I'm doing kind of a mental check-in to make sure that I'm, the, the spots that I'm drawing are in the correct spot relative to these other buildings that I've established. Uh, and I think the tooth of this paper is really helping me, so I'm not utilizing the shading stump much at all here because I want that texture. So just taking it slow, doing quick check-ins to make sure I'm generally in the right spot. And hopefully what you're seeing as well is that the value relationships are adjusting. We're recalibrating as we go. And so as we, you know, we started with this dark shape, and as we go lighter, then that dark that was established before all of a sudden becomes reflected light in there. Uh, and because what I've, I've seen some students do before is that they'll make an observation of the reflected light. You'll see some of these lighter areas, and they'll actually start to pull that out, and then they'll darken the darks, and then the contrast is too high. So what I like to do is generally go too dark um, and get the darks established and then pull out the lights if I need to in these shadow areas. So prioritize the dark aspects of the shadow first. And then these little cracks, I'm just lightly scraping across the surface and rolling the, the, the charcoal between my fingers. And I'm, my intent is to create a very natural expression of, of cracks in the surface, not again, not lines. If it reads as a line, then there's a chance that it's going to just pop off the surface. But I think at this point, it's still reading like texture. Sometimes what can be helpful is to try to, is try to visualize a path and then build that shape um, by running marks at, at a different angle uh, leading up to that edge. And then right in here, you know, it's dark, but then there's this, this crack that kind of works its way through. So I'm rolling that, rolling it in my fingers as I go. And I'm thinking about the flow of that rock face and letting the, letting the, the weight of the pencil, letting its natural form and the tooth of the paper do as much of the work for me to suggest that, that texture. So here's what I'm, this, is get, this gets really dark in this area. So this it should be a softer charcoal. This is where I can bring this out. This, this one is an HB and it just wasn't getting the depth that I wanted to, wanted it to. So I'm gonna come back in with this softer one and it gets a little bit darker. And now all of a sudden those areas that were dark read as reflected light. Uh, it's helpful also, also to think about this as being a shelf across here. So I'm trying to change the direction of my marks to really reflect that horizontal aspect of it. And then, then it changes to a wall. This comes down across here so I can then change the direction of my marks here. Suggest some of the cracks there, and then we get another dark kind of shelf underneath here. What's, what was really fascinating about you know learning about this is that um, uh, the, the people that lived here that built this 
they, um, they only lived there for about a hundred years. They put all of this work and then it's unknown why, but they fled and it's pretty wild. Okay. And kind of let that be a little softer so that we bring the area of focus into here. Look for the darkest darks in this area. Uh, one of the things to evaluate as well is look at the edges and try to evaluate the variation along an edge. The more varied it is, the more kind of naturalistic it's going to feel. So a hard, consistent line is really flat and it's an indication that it's in a kind of an abstraction. Um, so line variation really helps to simulate light and shadow and suggest form. Okay, so I'm just kind of refining right in here. I think this is going to be the kind of the focal point. So this is where I'm going to add a little bit more detail. About an hour and a quarter into it, I imagine we have about 30 minutes left. Um, if you can't stick around, this is going to go up as a recording, so you'll be able to see it uh, a bit later if you need to. Actually, I like that reflected light, so I'm just going to kind of wipe this down and then reestablish. And that's generally the, the my, my process you, you'll see me do is lay down marks, kind of wipe it down to help unify everything, then add detail, wipe it down, try to unify. Um, this is, that, that tends to be the way I paint as well. So they all kind of influence one another. Uh, Mary, you're asking about graphite. I, I seriously considered that for this one. Um, and I think I'm going to be switching to graphite for the next, uh, next drawing, um, which is going to be of a yellow lily. Um, but I, you know, I think certainly go for it. Um, I think one of the reasons that I chose graph or charcoal for this is to try to push the limits a bit on the detail and see how much I could really suggest using the charcoal. Charcoal, you can get detailed, but because it's so much softer, it lends itself to really an expression of light and shadow um, and less detail. Um, but I, so I wanted to kind of see if I could, you know, really just again, see how far I could push that. So if you see along this edge, what I'm trying to do is visualize the top of that building. And then instead of drawing that line, I'm drawing the dark shapes that, that kind of abut that line and come up right to that path. So I think you could certainly do this in, in graphite. And you know anybody, of course, you can use whatever material you want. And hopefully these principles still apply. If I were using graphite, I would generally be drawing it the same way. It just may have a different result. I like the way some of these buildings are, are reading. So some of these, like this one here is a little bit bright, so I can just kind of lightly wash over it and it, it knocks it down and it helps to unify it. This one here is a bit bright as well, so I'm just gonna build up that, that haze a little bit. Sharpen up some of these edges. All right, so now where are we at? So I think that that top edge is feeling better to me now. Um, I had indicated the shadows of those buttresses, but watch what we can do to really pull those out. So if I take my kneaded eraser, um, actually what I'm gonna do is I need to kind of block this in a little bit more. If I take my kneaded eraser and I pinch it, I can kind of find that that front edge. 
of that uh, buttress. And then I can work my way up to kind of close in on that to make it a little bit narrower. Trying not to draw a line, but you can see just that little suggestion of light um, is enough to really make that feel three-dimensional. And I can kind of do that with all of these. Just kind of pick off that, that front edge using the kneaded eraser. And I just have it kind of pinched down to this fine edge. Now, one of the things I haven't really talked about, I've mentioned it before, but not to a, a significant degree, is, is that our eyes are generally really good at perceiving subtle shifts in value. Um, and as a result, because we're good at seeing it that way, we often tend to overstate them. But, you know, allow, you can allow things to become very subtle in your drawing and trust that the viewer's eye will perceive it. Again, it's kind of like, you know, letting, you know, giving the, the mind an opportunity to work and, and kind of assume that the viewer's mind is going to, to want to be engaged and play a role in, in understanding the drawing. Um, and give it that opportunity. So that, that goes with, you know, suggesting the form as well as the value. So there, I just kind of erased out the, the front edges of those, and then I can use my shading stump to just kind of bring in and cut that down if they're too heavy. But I want to try to not think about them too much, like I don't want to outline it. But that can do a lot to bring that, that form to, to life. Ah, Michelle wants me to put the people. I'll get the people in. <laughs> I, I, in the preparatory one, I, I realized I didn't put that crowd of people in there, but I'll get those people in. I want to put them in later once I understand where I'm at, make sure everything is in the right spot. All right, I think, actually, I just want to build up some of the values in here a little bit more. Uh, build up some of these forms. There's a bit more contrast in the reference. Where am I? I got lost. Lost here. Okay. Just to reorient myself. And then this one is a little bit... Can bring those up a little bit. I will get those people in. There's this edge here. I think I need a little bit more structure. Okay, so I'm squinting at my drawing, looking at the ref looking at the projection in front of me just to make sure everything is feeling pretty good. Um, and thank you for all all for kind of being patient. All right, so I've got my, this is my softer one. Actually, I think I need the, I need the, the harder charcoal for this one because I don't need it to be super dark. But now I can kind of go back in and suggest the windows. Um, and, you know, they, they kind of have this keyhole shape, which is really cool. And I just want to kind of drop these in, just these kind of little little squiggles. They don't have to be perfect, perfect squares or rectangles. Replace them, see how they read. And I'm kind of just moving, trying to trying to move methodically through. I think I want to, I, I, this I need to make a little bit more prominent. So I'm going to pull out a little bit of the light on this side using that eraser and kind of feather it that down. There, feels better. The shading stump here. Add a little bit more form in this 
area. Now we're almost to the point where we can suggest those trees. I would have loved to have just kind of stopped and drawn this on location, but when you're part of the tour group, it doesn't really work out that way, so I had to take this photo. This isn't far from one of my favorite places on the planet, the Telluride. Anybody has a chance to visit Telluride, it's a pretty amazing place. Okay. How do we feel about that? I feel pretty good about that. Um, I, why don't I put the people in? I can put the people in if that works for you. Uh, Greg, <laughs> architecture is fun. Yes, I was out and I took reference photos. We're gonna be doing some architecture on Monday. I believe I wanna do the, the lighthouse on Monday. Pemaquid Light, which is my favorite lighthouse in Maine. Um, I know Portland Headlight gets all the glory, but my favorite is Pemaquid. So just suggesting the forms back there in the reference photo, you can barely see them. And that's what's really cool is establishing the people helps to, um, uh, you know, really helps to establish the scale of these, uh, of these buildings. So with the with the figures, I think it's help, it's best to to kind of squint and suggest the form, um, and try to hit it in one go, if you can. Now, one of the things that I'm leaning on in this is that it's an experience I had on my undergrad. We had a in a, in a figure drawing class, we had the assignment uh, to do it. It was a two week assignment. We had to do a major project that lasted two weeks. Um, and what I chose to do is instead of doing one drawing, I filled one sketchbook each week, so two full sketchbooks, and I went to, I went to the airport, and that was a time when you could just walk in. Uh, I went to the airport, I go to the mall, and I would sketch people. I would do these gesture drawings as people walked by. So, um, you know, you would have at most five seconds or so, you know, to kind of capture somebody. Um, and that was a really helpful experience. You know, the first half of the first book was just junk. So, you know, several hundred gestures I had done. And I, I mean, I don't, most of them would just, they just look like random squiggles. But after a while, it, it started to click. And you got, I got really, I got more effective at understanding which lines are essential in, in suggesting, suggesting a figure. So when you've got five seconds and you only can make one or two marks, um, you know, then I, what I did is I stopped, I stopped, um, starting with the head, uh, and instead, you know, focused on the, um, the gesture of the torso and building from there and then the legs and then the head just became, um, it really just kind of, it just kind of fell out of that. You didn't really need much of the head actually. So I was wasting time by starting with the head. Um, so if you do incorporate figures, I think that is perhaps one of the best assignments you can do is just fill a, 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 a sketchbook with gestures, um, uh, spe specifically of people walking by. It, was a, it, it felt like a luxury when I discovered that escalators were really effective because then you know, I, they would, you know, people would be standing still on the steps as they move up the escalator. And so I actually had a little bit more time uh, drawing them, but you know, give that a shot. Gesture drawing is really helpful. All right. I see. This is kind of bothering me here. There's, there's, I'm, I don't really feel like I have a sense of structure in here. So I want to kind of refine that just a little bit. All right. Looking for areas now where the structure may be lost. So like right in this area, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. So I need to 
I'm going to sharpen up some of the edges along in here just to provide a little bit more, um, a little bit more structure. Still thinking about it in terms of light and shadow, though. But I feel like that that reads pretty well, especially on the the screen in front of me. Now, get to the trees. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier with the vine charcoal. I've got this one that's all kind of broken into a wedge, and I want these marks intentionally to, to be different than uh, the marks that are using to create the buildings. So utilizing the tooth of the paper, I'm just kind of like tapping on there, tapping and kind of scraping. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for the, the I'm keeping the marks light, and I'm looking for the overall shape of these trees. Um, and I'm looking for the, the shape of the light parts right now. And so it's really just it's utilizing the weight of the, of the charcoal. Letting the texture and the tooth of the paper do its thing. Again, making my observations from the reference photo, holding that shape in my mind looking at the at the page more to see where I'm at than anything, make sure I'm in the right spot. All right, so now I've got kind of the light sides kind of roughed in for the most part. I'm gonna go back through and look for some of the middle values, the shapes of these darker areas. It'll be a little bit smaller than the overall shape. So I'm going to try to break these trees down into three basic values. That first pass established the, the lights. This second pass will establish the mid-tones. Maybe where I need to go a little bit darker. And now we'll go back through and we'll establish the darks. And here I'm kind of just putting a little bit more pressure. I'm kind of rolling my hand a little bit like this to, to engage the tip a bit more. But I'm still utilizing the side as, uh, and just kind of scraping across the tooth of the paper. But I'm now I'm looking for the shape of the darks. And again, before I make these marks, I want to do a, I'm doing a mental check-in on where I am relative to other landmarks in the, the structure. Um, and then with this drawing being really all about the buildings, you know, the trees, I just, I want the mind to be able to just accept them as trees, but not get fixated on them. So if there's too little information, it'll draw attention because the brain says, wait, wait, what's going on down there? I need to know more. Um, if there's too much detail, then the brain says, oh, that's an important area. I need to look at it. Um, and so I'm trying to find that balance between having just enough information versus too much. And this is again very similar to how I would be painting utilizing a brush. There's that highlight here. There's this tree that sticks up. Uh, Karen asking if you don't have a paper, if your paper doesn't have much tooth. It's a good question. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I mean, I think even with a really smooth paper, I generally have, it has some sort of tooth. Um, and with charcoal, it, um, it kind of needs a tooth to hold it. So you, but the, the general principle of scraping across the surface is uh, generally helps. And what, what might be helpful then, if you don't have a significant tooth, you're not able to create these marks, um, try rolling the material. So in this case, I have it kind of, the way I've been use, utilizing, it's been shaved down into this kind of triangular prism. It's flat on three sides. Um, and just kind of roll it across the surface and create irregular marks that way. So something like that. And that might get you what you want and start to simulate the tooth that way. 
Hopefully that makes sense. So here I'm just kind of applying that, what I was just talking about, just kind of rotating it, rocking it in my fingers. Um, and that the structure of the, the charcoal, or if this was graphite, and that structure would be naturally creating a, um, an organic looking form. Actually, what I think I want, I think I want to do is apply just a little bit of line up in here few areas where I'm bringing in a little bit more detail, utilizing a, kind of a dark line to help simulate that, that contrast along that tree, kind of sharpen that up a little bit. So hopefully that helped explain how you can simulate texture there. And I think I just need a little bit more definition right up in this area, and that helps to, to bring that tree out. Um, and I think what I need is this is jumping out a little bit. I want to I want to want to make that shadow line more distinct along in here. Let me drop this into shadow a bit more. And then some of these shadows in here suggest them. And I don't know as really if, as if I'm going to be doing anything different or uh, particularly of note other than just adding more detail. Um, so if you have any questions, um, Roberto is asking, do you prefer to do quick sketches or plein air painting? I, yeah, I, you know, plein air painting is the thing that I love the most. Um, but I really have been enjoying this drawing series. Um, what, I, what I like about sketches, here's what I like about sketches versus kind of studio paintings. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I consider marks as thoughts. Um, you know, so every mark we make starts as a thought, and every mark we have that we make has the potential to um, kind of be expressive of, of our thoughts and an indication to the viewer that a human made this, right? And sometimes when I see studio paintings, paintings that are so highly polished, we lose those marks, and then and then the work kind of shifts into a different mode. It becomes uh, almost otherworldly, you know, like how can it's hard to believe that a human made that. Whereas a sketch or a plein air study, um, it's the, the humanity, the, the fact that a human made that is, is part of the, of the enjoyment of it, the, the understanding of it. So that's why I prefer sketches, you know, but I have you know, kind of a deep admiration for kind of polished studio paintings. They just, for me, they fill different roles and they have different um, responses. All right, so there's this, these steps right in here that I want to provide. And this, these are kind of critical. The mind is kind of primed to see these. Even if they're little, they're these kind of thin, straight edges that stand out against the organic forms of the trees. But I, one of the reasons also that I prefer studies and sketches is just really it's, I have limited patience. <laughs> I get antsy and I want to get to the end. And so the idea, and I love the idea of finishing a painting in one sitting um, and working on a studio painting um, or even a more finished drawing. Uh, you know, by the, when I come back to it the next day, it's just a different experience and I've kind of lost that energy and I need to perhaps overcome that. All right, but I think we're pretty much done. So um, hopefully this has been helpful. Again, move through this with a, with a strategy. You know, it, if, you, if you have a strategy and you're able to kind of keep your mind kind of engaged with that, it, um, you know, you'll, you'll get through it. It can feel really intimidating at first, but you'll, you'll get through it. And so the really big thing is, 
is that constantly checking in. Where are you relative to other things? Don't get absorbed in one shape in isolation. Always be checking where is everything. And it can be really fast. I mean, and the more you do that, the more it becomes second nature. So if it's awkward at first, keep going and you'll and eventually you'll be able to trust those observations and, and you'll just be you'll just be making them without real conscious effort. You, before you make a mark, you'll do a quick check-in, you know, say, where am I? Am I in the right spot? And, uh, and then and kind of move on, you know, strike that, um, make that, that strike and then, and then uh, move on. So, uh, and, you know, think of, remember, keep things unified by light and shadow. Um, if you start from an expression of light and shadow first, it's easier to maintain that expression and, then, and that unification. If you line, outline things and then you try to shade it, it's difficult. You can, it, it's more, you're more likely to, um, you're more likely to have things feel fractured. So um, again, I'm with Artist Network. Go to artistnetwork.com and you can check out all the show pages. You can see all of the other um, episodes that we've got and all of the fantastic drawings. I think last count, I, I think we had over 200 submissions um, of various drawings posted across all of the episodes here. So a lot of you have been sharing your work that you've been completing as we've been drawing together. Um, so if you go to Artist Network and you go to the Drawing Together page, there's a link in, uh, in the, uh, the description. Um, just, you know, once you register, you can share your work on those pages. Uh, I don't know when the show page for this is going to go live, but it'll be up there hopefully soon. Um, join me again on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. I'll be drawing a yellow lily. Um, and then next week, I'm hopefully going to be getting to Lighthouse. I've been kind of um, narrowing down the reference images. A couple structures just for you, Greg. Um, And what else are we doing? I can't remember. Oh, a still life. I think we're going to be doing a still life and do, working on some fabric as well. That's something that we haven't really focused on is, is fabric. So I'm going to be doing something with, with that. Um, so thank you all for joining me. I'm going to hang out for a few more seconds to see if there are additional um, questions that come in. Um, again, this goes up as a recording afterwards. So if you would like to kind of watch again, you'll have that opportunity. Um, and feel free to post comments there because I do monitor those. Um, and I do my best to comment on your work when you post on Artist Network. Um, there's a lot going on, so it's hard sometimes, but. So thank you all for joining me. As always, it's a blast. This one was a lot of fun. Um, I feel like overall it came together pretty well. Um, uh, yeah, I guess if, if you, uh, JC, you're saying, is it okay to mention the price reduction on Artist Network TV? So yeah, go to, go check out artistnetwork.com. We have a lot of video resources and that's, that's also my, my job with Artist Network is as a producer for Artist Network TV. So I, I'm making, you know, working with a lot of artists to create videos and, you know, we have a large library of, of resources available. And um, so check those out. And we're going to be making more. Um, you're welcome, everybody. Maddie, I'm glad that you mentioned that about the detail. I'm glad that that's reading for you like that. Actually, what I want to do is I think pull a little bit of light down in here. Just a little light scraping through. All right. I appreciate it. I think we're all good to go. I can't wait for Wednesday. I already started the preparatory drawing. It's going to be in graphite. Um, it'll be a flower. It's going to be, I think it's the third one that we'll have created as part of the series. Each one's a little bit different. Um, so a lot of fun. So I am uh, excited to see you all there and uh, have a great day. Enjoy. I can't wait to see all your drawings.